The lab that we're about to work on today is primarily involved with Mendelian genetics. And the examples used in the lab deal primarily with poultry. And for that reason, we're basically going to look at a number of the examples uh, with uh, our hands on the uh, chickens themselves and to look at some of the eggs so we get a better feel for the traits that we're working with and the traits that you'll be dealing with on your homework sets. Today, to help me with my example is Dr. George Brandt, who's a professor in animal science. And these are some of his birds and some of the eggs from the poultry farm that he's involved with. They all come from the Iowa State Poultry Farm that's near campus. We're going to be dealing with primarily four traits today. The first trait is egg color, and we'll be showing some examples about that and discussing the inheritance pattern. The second is plumage color, which involves incomplete uh, dominance and provides a very good example for that. The third trait is a type of comb, and we'll show you three examples from there. And the final deals with a uh, rate of feathering and how it relates to sexing of chickens. First example for egg color that we're going to discuss deals with blue and white eggs. And the inheritance pattern for them is rather simple. Blue is dominant to white. And as you can see, an animal which may be either homozygous for the blue allele or heterozygous for the blue allele uh, will produce uh, blue eggs. White is recessive to blue. And an animal, uh, a hen has to be white, has to have the genes for white eggs to, in fact, uh, produce the white eggs. So she has to be homozygous for the little O allele, and that will produce white eggs. Now let's take a look at some of these eggs so we have a feel for the different colors that we're talking about. The first one that we're going to uh, show you, and is in front of Dr. Brandt here, is a common white egg. Very common. We all see those in the supermarket. The next egg, and the one we've been dealing with in terms of this genetics problem, is a blue egg. And as you can see, there's a great deal of variation amongst the, uh, the color blue here. Perhaps, Dr. Brandt, you'd like to tell us a little bit about the chickens that these come from. The uh, white eggs are from the most common type of egg layers in the United States, which is the white legern. The uh, blue and greenish shades of eggs come from a rather recent import from South America called the Aracana. It's uh, very popular because of its novelty color. I see. Now, we also have here in front of me are some brown eggs. And brown eggs aren't seen uh, very commonly in the United States, but of course, they're common in many parts of the world. What uh, type of birds do these come from? Well, there are a variety of birds which uh, lay brown shelled eggs. For instance, the meat type birds lay brown shelled eggs. But for egg production, uh, Plymouth Rock, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island Reds are most common. Now, we're not going to deal with this example today, but it's at least uh, interesting to see that there are a variety of colors of uh, eggs to deal with. The example that we're most interested in, again, are the blue and white eggs. And I hear, have here another uh, tray of them. As you can see, there are three uh, uh, blues of a very similar color, two other blues, which are somewhat different. This is caused by uh, modifying genes. And here we have the, white, uh, the five white eggs. Again, the inheritance pattern is, is very simple. White is recessive to blue. The hen is homozygous for uh, the white alleles, the recessive white alleles. The eggs will be white. She's either heterozygous or homozygous for the dominant uh, allele associated with the color blue. Then her eggs will be blue. The next example that we're going to deal with deals with incomplete dominance. We've already discussed incomplete dominance as it relates to coat color in cattle. I hope you'll remember from the lecture we discussed cattle that uh, the coat colors were white, roan, and red. And we have a similar example with chickens that we're going to show you today, even though it's not in the lab book for the first laboratory. This example of incomplete dominance deals with three colors, white or splashed white as it's called, blue, and black. White is homozygous for the little b allele. Blue is heterozygous for the big b, little b alleles. And black is homozygous for the big b allele. If we cross chickens, which are big b, little b, by big b, little b, or in other words, we cross two birds that are blue, we would expect to get offspring whose colors are uh, 
black, blue, and white in the frequencies one black, two blue, and one white. Dr. Brandt and I are holding uh, the three chickens, and they all represent the three colors we talked about. Uh, uh, the first bird is obviously a black one that Dr. Brandt is holding on, and that's homozygous uh, for the big B allele. The second bird that he has here is a splash white bird, not completely white, but splash white, and the white bird is homozygous for the little B allele. And the bird that I'm holding here is considered to be blue, and this bird uh, basically is heterozygous, uh, big B, little b. Perhaps Dr. Brand would like to say a little bit about these birds and where they come from. This breed is the blue Andalusian breed, which comes from the Mediterranean area. It's related to the Legan breeds and lays uh, large white eggs, as we saw earlier. So again, let's review once more the color uh, combinations that we have. We have black, homozygous for the big B allele. Homo splash white, which is homozygous for the little b allele, and the heterozygous animal, showing the incomplete uh, dominance, is blue, and this one is big b, little b, is its genotype. This next example deals with comb type. This example differs from the others that we discussed before because it deals with an example of a trait that's controlled by genes at two loci. And those that uh, we're going to look at are uh, different combs. And we'll look at three of the four examples that we talked about in the lab manual. Walnut comb will not be included, but it's an animal which, is, uh, which contains the dominant alleles at both the R and the P locus. So an animal that has one uh, large R or large P allele, has both of them, will produce the walnut comb. A rose comb individual is an animal that is homozygous for the recessive small p allele and can either be heterozygous or homozygous for the large r allele. The third comb type, and we have an example of that also, is a p comb. And this is an animal that is homozygous for the recessive little r allele and either can be heterozygous or homozygous for the capital P allele. And the final comb type, which we also have an example for, is the single comb. And this is an animal that is homozygous at both loci. It has little r, little r, and little p, little p. We just looked at four examples of comb types, and here we have three birds. We do not have a walnut comb, and I'll come back to that in a few minutes to discuss what a walnut comb might look like. But let's start first with the uh, bird that Dr. Brandt is holding. And this is a bird that has a single comb. Dr. Brandt, perhaps you'd like to discuss this bird. Well, this is an uh, Orpington. The single comb is the most common comb type that we have. You'll notice that it's a narrow blade of tissue with uh, points along the top and a, a longer, what's termed, blade at the back of the bird's head. Now, many uh, breeds that are common in the U.S. that used to be common or are in some of the commercial stocks have the single comb. Is that correct? The Leghorns and the Plymouth Rocks and the Rhode Island Reds. That's, that's correct. Okay. And now the second bird. Perhaps you'd like to tell us about that uh, comb type. Well, the second bird is a uh, Wyandotte, and it has a rose comb. You'll notice that the comb is uh, rather broad and flattened. It has some bumps and nodules on it. And at the very back, it has a very long what's termed spike, which lays along the back of the bird's head. Okay. And the third comb type that we talked about is the pea comb. Yes. And this is found in the Cornish. You'll notice that it looks uh, somewhat like three small single combs uh, lined up side by side. The uh, Cornish is a bird which was used extensively in the breeding for our broilers uh, because of its uh, very heavy muscling. I see. Now, the walnut comb, which we don't have an example for, is usually produced, of course, by crossing of some of the other types, but uh, of, of crossing basically the, uh, the pea and the rose type will produce a walnut comb. It's one way to get it. Now, uh, a walnut comb would have just a little bit of comb down here at the end, and it looked like a piece of a shelled de walnut. Is that correct? Yes. Let's review something about what we've talked about about comb types. We've had three examples of the four we've discussed. 
comb type is controlled by genes at two, uh, two loci. We have the big uh, R allele, and when that is combined with the big P allele, we have the walnut comb, which we don't have an example for. The rose comb results from a homozygous little p alleles and a big R allele for the R locus. P combs uh, uh, come from the very fact that we have homozygous small r, uh, those are the recessive alleles, and we have a large p allele to produce the p comb. And finally, the single comb, which we looked at first, is a result of homozygous recessive at both the R and the P locus. Our last chicken example deals with sex-linked traits, and we'll be looking at two traits, rate of feathering and barring. In the chicken, the homogametic sex is the male, and the female is the heterogametic sex. And that's just the opposite of what situation we have with, in fact, uh, in humans. Now, let's first look at slow feathering and rapid feathering. For the male, since it's the homogametic sex, it needs the dominant uh, K allele. Uh, it doesn't make any difference what the other allele is, and it will be slow feathering. The female, on the other hand, uh, will show the allele that she is. If it's big K, she'll be slow feathering. If it's little k, she'll be rapid feathering. Little k is recessive to big k, so rapid feathering is recessive. So the only way that a male will be rapid feathering is to be little k, little k. A similar uh, example exists for barring, where big B will produce a barred animal, whether it be in the male or in the female. Little b will produce no bar if it's alone, of course, it will be in the female, but it has to be homozygous, little b, little b, to produce no bar in the male. The two traits that we've talked about, rate of feathering and barring, can be used, therefore, to sex chickens, and this is very useful uh, at the day of hatch. Rate of feathering is commonly used in the egg-laying varieties, and barring may be used in some of the meat production lines, but it's also used in some of the varieties used for show. Now let's take a look at the chicks that Dr. Brandt and I have. These were kindly provided for us by Highline uh, Poultry, which is in Dallas Center, Iowa. And we have each have two birds, and uh, two males and two females. And what we're going to demonstrate then is the rate of feathering, and we'll show you the differences so you have a good feel for how these might be used to sex the, uh, the uh, chickens at the day of hatch or the day after, for that matter. The birds that I'm holding are, in fact, females, and they are rapid feathering. And I'll hold up a wing here of one of the birds. And now Dr. Brandt will show you the wing feathers on one of his two birds. And this is a slow feathering, and this is used uh, to denote the male. If you look very closely, you'll notice that every other feather in the rapid feathering uh, bird here, which is the female, is short, and every other one is long. If we look, however, at the male birds that Dr. Brandt has, and we look at one of the examples here, every one of the feathers is approximately the same length. Now, we don't have an example of barring. But the, this example of rapid and slow feathering is quite useful to, to show you something about a sex-linked trait and how it might be used to sex chickens at birth. Let's review the traits that we've covered today. We've talked about egg color. We looked at blue and white eggs, blue being dominant to white color. We've also talked about plumage color, another trait that, at least for this example, was controlled by a single uh, set of alleles at one locus and we had black, white, and blue animals, and this is an example of incomplete dominance. We looked at comb type, a trait that was controlled by genes at two loci, and you remember we talked about four types of combs, walnut, pea, rose, and single combs. And finally, we talked about two sex-linked traits, rate of feathering and barring, and we looked at an example of rate of feathering and discussed how that might be used for sexing 
of chicks a day have hatched. Let me again thank my colleague, Dr. Brandt, and let me thank a High Line uh, Poultry in Dallas Center for providing us with some of the birds that we use for today's example.